All right, hi. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Matt Silverman, technical leader for Cisco. And uh, I've, I've worked on things like ClientLink and multi-user MIMO. And today we're going to go into a little discussion on that. Um, seems to be missing a slide. OK. Um, so let's just give a little review of single user MIMO. Uh, that's the legacy type of, of communication system, which would be you know, something that's been in 802.11 since A, B, G. Um, and that's just, you know, any given frame you're sending, you're sending the data to a single client. Um, and starting with 11N, there was the capability to send uh, multiple spatial streams, and that's purely a play on delivering uh, higher capacity, higher throughput to a single client. Um, but multiple antennas are required for that on the client. You can only sp send a number of spatial streams that equal the number of receive chains on the client, number of antennas on the client, and you have to have at least that number of antennas on the AP as well. And any additional antennas are going to be used for beamforming the, the signal to the client so that the client can receive it uh, optimally and has higher SNR. So now moving to multi-user MIMO. Well, so the 11N and 11AC single-user MIMO stuff, that's great for increasing throughput to single clients. You know, you start getting with 11AC, you start getting clients that are getting a gig wireless, which is, is great. But you still have a lot of lower data rate clients out there, single spatial stream, one and, two, uh, antenna, one and two antenna clients. And they you know, are a big part of what's in the mix in any sort of deployment. Um, so what they end up doing is they bring down the overall capacity. So instead of using multiple spatial streams to increase the throughput to a single client, why not share the love and you send one spatial stream to one client, another spatial stream to another client, and these are clients that on their own aren't capable of, of receiving uh, multiple, like three spatial stream, four spatial stream, but can be included in a three or four spatial stream packet uh, receiving just a single spatial stream. Uh, there is some uses for higher, for higher throughput clients, like three by threes and four by fours. Um, there's some claim that you can get you know, better rate versus range for them because you're only sending a single spatial stream to each or fewer number of spatial streams than, uh, than you would typically send in a single user packet to them. Um, so the clients can receive those easier. It's better, it's better from a beam forming perspective to be able to send just a single spatial stream to each of those. But um, I think the main focus from multi-user MIMO is, is bringing up the overall capacity when there's the presence of these, these lower data rate one by ones and two by twos. Um, it also has the benefit of you know, in a really busy wireless medium where you have a lot of clients, you have lots of co contention events. The clients are kind of trying to transmit, the AP is, there's, there's just a lot of devices out there trying to gain access to the medium. And if you can reduce those contention events, it, it does help overall capacity. And if instead of sending three separate packets to three one-by-one -one clients, you're sending one packet to all three, then, you know, you've just re reduced it to a third. Um, so, how does it work? Um, there's two parts to the equation here. You have the receive side and the transmit side. So on the receive side, you need a, a client that's first of all capable of understanding what an MU packet is and has the capability to, uh, has enough receive chains to receive an MU packet and there, there'll be spatial streams in that MU packet that aren't intended for it and would otherwise show up as just pure interference. So they need to have enough receive chains to suppress the interference from the spatial streams that aren't intended for it, while having a, a receive chain or you know, a number of receive chains to, to receive properly and decode the spatial stream that's actually intended for it. And that's great. You could have you know, three three by threes, and you send a three spatial stream packet. The three by three clients receives the full three spatial stream packet, just suppresses the two spatial streams that aren't intended for it and receives the one spatial stream perfectly fine. But in most situations, that's not going to be the use case. It's going to be clients that don't have enough receive chains to receive all three spatial streams. And there has to be, um, there has to be action on the part of the AP to null and beamform in a proper way so that the clients don't receive spatial streams that aren't intended for it. They need, the AP needs to null the interference for the client. And that's, this is probably a good opportunity to whiteboard exactly how this might work. Is this okay? Right. 
So let's, let's say that you've blasted a couple clients and an AP out in the middle of space and there's no, there's no buildings or, or walls to create any reflections. Um, and the AP is just a two antenna AP. This is you know, just it's two antennas. And you have client one over here and client two over here. And so you're going to send um, you're going to send a spatial stream to client one by sending identical signals on both of these transmit paths, and it's going to create a beam pattern that's mostly kind of like this. So the signal you're sending to it, the spatial stream you're sending to client one, it's you know beam forming optimally to it. It's it's receiving. This is the part of the of this the antenna beam pattern that's going to have the highest SNR to this client, the highest, you know, receive uh, signal. And over here, you can see the signal strength is actually identically a null. So there's actually 0% of this signal that's being received by this client. It doesn't hear it at all. So for client two, you could transmit its spatial stream by sending identical signals on these two paths, except on one of the paths you, you would just add a phase delay of 180 degrees, and it will create a beam pattern like this. Right? So conversely, you have a null going to this client. It doesn't hear any of that signal, and that's how you'd send two spatial streams to two clients at the same time when they don't have any ability of their own to suppress interference. Um, now, what happens if you add a third client to this? There's no theoretical way to null all the spatial streams to all the clients unless you have enough, unless you have a, a, the number of transmit chains that are equal to the number of spatial streams you're trying to send to all these clients. So you can't add a third here unless you add extra transmitters. Um, and so another problem, this is a very idealized uh, situation. Let's say that there is a, um, a little bit of noise on how you estimate the way you want to beam form to this guy and null to this guy. You, know, you, you might get something more like this, right? So you're no longer beam forming properly to this guy because you have a little bit of noise on your estimation of how to do that. And you're no longer nulling to this guy perfectly. Instead, he's receiving just a little bit of interference. And that's the most likely scenario you're going to get in, in multi-user MIMOs. You have, you have a little bit of interference leaking into the streams that don't want them. And you're not quite beam forming as well as you'd like to to the clients that are trying to, with the with streams you're trying to send. Yes. Now, when you say interference, you're talking layer one preambles? Uh, well, the preambles and the data. So it's, it's okay, so those clients are going to go into a back okay. off. Well, the, so, the preamble, well, so the preamble is shared. So it's not really interference. It's shared between all the spatial streams. And that they're expecting to receive. It's, it's right when you, you get to, um, where did I put that guy? So when you get to this uh, VHD sig B field, that's when it gets split off. <coughs> so starting there, it's going to be, you know, Data, data user 2 is going to start seeing data users 1 sig field as interference, if he sees any at all. But everything before that is shared and common to all the spatial structures. Like but yeah, so you end up getting a little bit of in interference. That's what's called a, a, a degraded SINR signal to interference to noise ratio. And that starts bringing down the performance a little bit. But this, this is the major challenge of, of multi-user MIMO, is avoiding degradation in the suppression of the interference on the transmit side and, and on the receive side when it's possible. What are you seeing as a degree of separation you need for these clients to be away from each other? Right, so I mean that... that full 90 degree... Right, so, so that's a good point. I mean, this, this is a totally contrived scenario. But let's imagine that uh, instead, you know, client one and client two are right next to each... or pretty close to each other. So then you're gonna, what you're going to end up seeing is you still need to null the client to client two with, uh, with the beam pattern you're sending to client one. All right, let's say this is pattern one. And then um, you're going to need, so this is like where the null would be. And then the null going to client one would be somewhere around there. 
So you're still managing to null to these two guys, but you're no longer even close to beamforming to them. So you might not see any interference from the other streams, but you're going to see a very, very low RS, uh, RSSI at the client. So it's just going to get a much, much more reduced uh, data rate that you're able to send with it versus just beamforming a packet to this guy individually and beamforming a packet to that guy individually. But I mean, as far as separation, it depends. Um, indoors, the coherence, the correlation between two spots that are located very close together is low. I mean, you just have a lot of multipath that makes it so a client right here sees a very different channel than a client right here. Outdoor, it's more like, it's more like this. Um, but indoor, it's not, it's not so much how, how close are the clients together. It's more uh, how frequently is the channel changing. So you're, got, you're somebody who's holding a phone like this. You've just moved like this. Your channel's changed a lot. And so your estimation is going to be, you know, depending on how long ago you took a snapshot of the channel, it could be off by a lot or a little. It just depends on, you know, how much the client's moving, the dynamics of the environment around the clients, and stuff like that. So here, uh, here's a little information about how the AP knows exactly how to beamform and null to the different clients it's trying to send an MU uh, frame to. Um, this is the protocol that's set up in 11AC. It borrows a lot from what was set up in 11N. Um, but what the AP does is from time to time it's going to send an announcement frame that's an NDPA announcement. And a SIFS will go by and then it'll be followed by a, a a five preamble that has enough spatial streams to fully sound the channel to all the clients that it's, it's interested in sounding the channel to. So all of the clients receive this NDP and they use, you know, they use channel estimation just f that they use for receiving any packet. They'll do uh, some amount of DSP on that, either an SV, what's called an SVD where they take the channel information, do some linear algebra on it, and you come up with the optimal way to transmit to that client. And it's going to feed that information back, but only after it's polled to do so. So, I mean, the, one of the clients can't send it back immediately, but the other clients, you're going to need to poll them. So you'll send the sounding poll to them. And then each client will send out this uh, VHT compressed beamforming information. And that information is all you really need to, to do the math in, in the Wi-Fi chipset and transmit the MU frame to it. Um, but there is significant overhead in doing it, so you need to do it somewhat intelligently. It's, it's, you know, this, this entire exchange here for three clients would be something on the order of 400 microseconds, which turns out to be a lot. Um, so you don't, you don't really want to have to sound the frame to any given three clients, sound, sound the channel to any given three clients very often. You know, 40 milliseconds, which might seem like a short amount of time. Uh, you don't want to do it much more frequently than that. Otherwise, the, there's very diminishing returns in doing MU versus just not sounding the channel at all, foregoing the overhead, and just sending SU to them individually. So when sending an MU frame, uh, you know, just in regular SU, there's, there's you send a frame, the client sends a block ACK, uh, just to say, I've received these properly, these, you know, these parts of the frame I didn't receive properly, please resend them. Um, but if you kept with that protocol, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't really work because each of the three clients would you know, send that information back at the same time. So instead, you can have one that sends the block act back immediately and the rest need to be pulled for that information. So that, that adds extra overhead to, the, to sending MU as well. Wes? Is by sending these differently, FCC says we can only transmit X loud. Yeah. Total. Right. Does it change if I if I'm talking to two or three uh, stations at the same time? Do I have to lower my transmit power? So because FCC is an aggregate right, rule, right, yeah. and then if you break it into pieces, you still that means each piece has to have less. Absolutely. And Which, so, so does that overcome? So it's not, it's not any different than sending multiple spatial streams to a single client. You still need to reduce the amount of power you're sending per spatial stream. The total power you're sending needs to remain the same. But in single user, yeah. the aggregate of all of those spatial streams yeah. maintains our RSSI. 
by splitting it up, each individual is now going to get less RSSI than they would if we weren't using MI, MUMIMO. Uh, that, no, that's true. That's true. That's not necessarily an FCC issue, but it's, it's well, I mean, the, an issue with proper reception of the packet or rate versus range. And I mean, what you're probably going to see is multi-user MIMO is primarily going to be something you're going to use um, within a safe range of the AP. So clients that are really far away from the AP, it's probably gonna it's probably gonna draw back to single user. I mean, for a bunch of reasons. One reason would be that a farther away client just has a more noisy channel estimate that it's gonna send back, and the ability to do this beam forming and nulling is gonna be degraded somewhat. But even if this say you just said MU MIMO AP and two clients, yeah, and for sake of argument, you had four spatial streams, and you split two to one and two to the other. Mm -hmm. Had you not split them, the the single client would have received four times more energy, double the energy. Right, yes. No, that's absolutely true. You're, so, so it's yeah. a basically, you're getting a 3 dB loss at RSSI. Yeah. Is that loss going to cause you to have a lower data rate, which means you're transmitting less data overcome by the I can send right. it to at the same time? No, the, you're, you're right about that. You are, you're splitting the power per, on a per client basis, you know, so... So yeah, the total the, so the total received power for any given for any number of spatial streams going to a single client, you know, is is going to get cut in half. But the amount of power per spatial stream that you're sending is is not really cut, right? The, the um, net effect is in yeah. the client's point of view. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so the client, yeah, and that's why it's going to be something that's more useful for clients that aren't in danger of getting dropped down in data rates. In multi-user MIMO, the the primary driver of rate shifting downward is going to be uh, a difficulty in suppressing interference that's intended for this client to that client. So, and that, that has to do with you know, how frequent the channel sounding is occurring, how accurate the channel sounding is, and, and stuff like that. But, so, but you're right, it's, 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 it's a degraded rate versus range story. So it's not going to be something that's benefiting clients very far away from the AP. But it's something that's definitely beneficial in an HD environment where you have lots and lots of clients. Some are very close to the AP. Some are slightly farther away, but they're, they're not really in danger of their FI rates being, being dropped down because they're still close enough. We already have a pretty small uh, diameter of QAM 256 size in AC today. Um, I, I, I guess small. You know, ours, oh. I think, goes out to... 30 or 40 meters? feet or something yeah. like that? Yeah. So not... if even if the clients are within 10 meters right. and you take 3 dB off, right. that, may, that might shrink that 10 meters down to 8 meters. Right. I mean, this, this, is, this is a feature that you need to take advantage where it's possible to take advantage of it. And there's lots of scenarios where you can, but the, ones you're just, you know, the, the problems you're describing are definitely ones you need to pay attention to and implement your solution properly so that you, you know, you're not relying on it to, to create better rate versus range or anything like that. I mean, it's... It, it just seems like it's a trade-off between do I take an RSSI hit of minus 3 dB to a client yeah. or do I talk to two clients at the same time? Right. And, 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 there's, and so if, let's say you take 3 dB off of the signal you're sending to that client um, and, I mean, in any given scenario, you can say how long is it going to take for me to get this data from, from, from the AP to whatever number of clients I'm sending it to. Three, four clients, a single client. Look, look at how long it would take to send just single user frames to each individual client or versus how long it would take to send a multi-user frame to all the clients in addition to whatever sounding overhead you have and whatever phi rate back off you're gonna need to employ to get the multi-user you know, through properly. And if there's a net benefit, you use multi-user. If there's not a net benefit, you stick with single user. It's just now you have the option to do either. Right? I just well, wonder if you have any statistics that oh, you've well, tested, because we, we don't have access to the newer cool stuff to see if it's actually going to play. Right. Well, we, yeah, we, don't, we don't have access to it yet either. It's, it's, yeah, it's coming out, but it's not, it's not with gonna, us. That's going to be a constant evaluation, right? That, that's yeah. not going to be, a, hey, here's your solution. And by the way, every single packet's going to be, you know, no. MIMO, right? No, 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 no it is. It's going to be a continual it is the radio firmware in real time yeah. is, this, is making a, a very fast decision. Should I send this SU or MU? You know, how am I scheduling my packets to enable MU to, to really take advantage of the capability? Because if you're scheduling, let's say you have three clients that are in an M, MU group together, and 
you re you'd really love to send ME frames to it, but their packets just are going out at different times. It's just not, it's not gonna work, but if your scheduler can make that happen, that's great. So, I mean, there's, just, there's a lot of different ways that you need to have the radio firmware working with the host and the driver to take advantage of the capability. But it doesn't mean that it's gonna work all the time. It's not gonna, it's not gonna benefit it blanketly every single client all the time. It's just, but it's, but it's there to be used if you can implement it properly. What's the maximum beam form? Is it, is it going to be four based on the antenna elements and radio chains? I'm sorry, what is the question? Maximum beam forms that can happen? Oh, so yeah, it'll be the number of transmit chains you have. So yeah. I guess with what, be four? Yeah, well, so all the chipsets coming out, for the most part, are, are four by fours. So you're going to see, yeah, four. Like four, four MU-capable clients, or four MU-capable APs, and a lot of them three. I mean, having... You really need extra transmit chains to make it work well, um, because when, it, when you're dealing with the, the number of transmit chains equals the number of MU spatial streams you're trying to send out, there's a lot of, it, it's hard to control the interference, the interstream interference. The more transmit chains you have, the more control you have over suppressing the interference, even in the case where your, your channel estimates may be a little bit noisy, and also um, being able to retain a lot of the beamforming gain that you're giving up uh, versus the SU case, where you're just purely using all the transmit chains to focus the energy at the, at the client. But yeah, the, the answer is the more transmit chains, the better. The uh, qualifier is that the client needs to support the sounding to those number of antennas. And as far as we know, all the clients are just going to support sounding four transmit antennas. So having additional transmit chains beyond four is not that useful in the industry yet. And there's no legacy uh, issues, right? I mean, those clients could be 8 to 11N. They could be, or do they need oh, to Oh, no, be? they need to. I, theoretically, they don't need to be. I mean, well, if, yeah, you know, theoretically, they don't need to be. But within the standard, they have to be. Yeah, there, you can't, I mean, you know, an AP could try, um, but. Because we're being forming today to. Yeah. Legacy right. devices, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you could just change the way you do that to try to, you know, if you had an MU-capable transmitter, you could just change the way you pre-code the information that's going out and, you know, try to do that. It just depends on whether or not your chipset's capable of it. And um, it's not something that's really within the standard. The standard's not meant to support that. Well, the Wi-Fi voodoo is, is live and well. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, so we've talked, you know, quite a bit about the challenges. I mean, one of the main challenges is that you need, you need to sell on the channel. There's overhead in doing that. The clients that you really need it for, the clients that you're trying to show benefit to MU Mima for are, are one by ones and, and lower data rate clients. And those are the ones that are going to be a little bit more mobile. Like you rarely are getting, you know, service, you know, data service on your phone when it's just sitting down. And typically you're holding it in some way and not holding it perfectly still. So, so the channel is a little bit more dynamic with the clients that you're targeting. And that means more frequent sounding of the channel to avoid it getting too stale. Um, so there's challenges around architecting and implementing the correct radio firmware to you know, get the most out of MU MIMO, not waste a lot of time with ch uh, channel sounding, uh, do the polling in ways that are opportunistic so they, they, they don't waste time on the channel. Um, and what happens when you fail to sound the channel frequently enough for a client is you know, it sees too much of the streams that aren't intended for it and that, that's, you're gonna cause it to, you're gonna have to pull back the fire rates you're sending to it in order to get the frame through properly. So, so that, with that being said, though, does that change our uh, layer one survey, right? Because today we believe in small cells anyway, right? Uh -huh. and, and this sounds like you know, we still need to incorporate small cells, but do we even need to go smaller to take advantage of the higher chains or I, the higher I, bandwidth? I mean, I guess I if, it's, it's early if you were going to design a solution around multi-user MIMO, then I guess the answer would be yes, but I don't know that you want to... I don't know that you want to design a deployment around multi-user MIMO. You just want to take advantage of it closer into the AP. Where it, and that's going to benefit the outskirts of the cell as well because you know, you're going to take up less time to delivering data and, and voice to the inner cell. You'll have more time to, for retries and, and 
longer well, packets due to five, you know. Right, but if you have a larger cell, you have more clients, you're gonna have more sounding, right? Higher density. Right, but so let's say you have a, let's say you have a client that's at the edge of the cell. You know, the AP knows this, the AP understands how frequently it needs to be sounded to. And if it just doesn't make sense from a multi-user perspective to sound the channel of that client, it's just not gonna bother sounding the channel. It's not gonna include it in multi-user. It's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna create more overhead or more retries because of MU failures or anything. It's just the firmware's gonna say, ah, we're not including this guy. He's just not gonna, he's just not useful from an MU perspective. We have all these clients that are close uh, to the AP, you know, within, I mean, close is, it, we're still talking, you know, yeah, somewhat guessing here, but within you know thirty to fifty feet kind of thing. Um, so it's it's not it's not like it's gonna it's just something that's you know thousand twenty four qualm type cell. Yeah. But yeah, it's <laughs> one more question. The uh, a lot of this we're taking a leap of faith, uh -huh. right? Because the the sounding probes, all those things that go on, we can't see those in packet captures. Well, you can see the you can see the announcements. I, I I typically don't think that the sniffers capture the actual sounding portion of the the frame, the NDP, but uh, they do see the NDPAs, the announcement frames, and you will see the polling, you will see the feedback, you see all that stuff. Right, but like for preambles and stuff, we don't see. I mean, th those things, you you those back off timers and whatnot. So we're taking a leap of faith that the vendor incorporates those to standard. Uh, is there ways to, as this starts to take off, to see and you know pull out that data? What's going on? How much time are we spending on, you know, on a particular cell that we're sending these these sounds, you know, the, the sound probes and, and right. Things? So I mean, that that you can see with a sniffer. Um, you know, you you can see the NDPAs going out, and you'll see um, you'll see any sort of beamforming feedback, you'll see beamforming polling, all of those packets you'll be able to see and the sniffer should identify them. Uh, maybe, you know, if, if they don't, then either Wireshark or something needs to update. But you should be able to track that and, and tell how much time that it's taken up the, the channel. Um, as far as whether or not an MU frame is occurring, um, you know, you. I mean, a simple, a simple, really, if you, well, I don't know if it's a simple test, but you could, you could try um, two single spatial stream clients and try to find a scenario where all of a sudden the throughput is higher than, than you could ever get single user to them. I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty simple experiment that you should get to work somewhere. One by one clients, place them down, um, you know, try not to move around a lot, and, um, and just try to send uh, a throughput test to them. If you're getting higher throughput than, than you could ever get with just a single client, then, then you're seeing multi-user work. Um, as far as measuring its impact in a deployment with lots of clients in a real life scenario, it's, it's gonna be more nebulous. It's, kinda, it's a little bit harder. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, addressing the challenges. We've talked about a few ways, but um, you know, like these clients at the edge of the cell and the ones who just are moving, or you know, somebody's walking around and trying to do something at the same time and the channel for him is changing rapidly. Those guys, they, they're gonna be excluded from MU. You know, they're, you know, a good implementation wouldn't try to sound to those guys unless it's the only client. It's the only of a few clients and sounding the channel that guy's not really, you can do it frequently enough and not really impact the capacity. Um, but you want to have intelligent firmware that doesn't oversound the channel. Uh, you need to keep good track and have a good prediction of what your MU data rate you're going to be able to support to every given client versus its SU data rate because that's going to help you decide is it worth sending this packet MU versus SU? SU I can get M9 and MU I can only get M7. You know, you got, you, that needs to be tracked very well. Uh, and you need to, you know, with that information, along with the size of the payload that you're sending the client, its fire rate, uh, you'll need to make a good decision whether to send SU or MU to that client at any given, any given packet. Um, you know, one of the ways that, one of the environments that might benefit from this is ones that are less spatially sensitive. So you've moved a foot, it's no big deal because there's very high correlation between the two uh, channels, and that's something you might see more in outdoor uh, line of sight scenarios like stadiums. 
Um, and I mentioned before, the more AP antennas you have, the better, although that's limited somewhat by client support as far as sounding the channel. And then uh, Paramount is, is intelligent scheduling. You need, you need frames to be queued up and available for clients that are well suited for each other in MU frames uh, to be available at the same time so that it can go out at the same time.